everyone, it's Marion with a Y. Today, I wanna to show you the fun that can be had with Marabou's newer metallic and glitter inks, and maybe a couple of neons too. Now, if you're not familiar with them, I'm linking a video up there for you now so that you can see and learn all about the 14 new colors. And I'll link it below in the description box too. But we're just gonna be playing with these for today. The pieces we're making require white alcohol ink too. Now, if you have Marabou's white, that will work. I've used it successfully, but I just prefer Jacquard Pinata white or Blanco Blanco. And the reason for that is simply because I can use a bit less for the same opacity. And Blanco Blanco is available in these economical four ounce bottles, which is like eight of these or six of these. And given how much white we use in resin work, this is a far better financial option. Now for the resin, everyone has their favorite resins, those they've come to trust for specific applications. For resin and alcohol ink pieces, my absolute favorite resin is ClearCast 7050. And I get asked a ton why I choose this resin, especially because I have a dozen other resins in my studio. It's really because ClearCast releases bubbles really easily compared to a lot of other resins I've tried. It cures rock hard in 24 hours, and it's really strong. And for today's pieces, that strength is going to be very important because we're going to make a very thin piece. Now, people who make coasters often ask if this resin can withstand a very hot cup of coffee being set on it. It was not designed for that. It can handle a warm cup, but not a very hot one. It's perfect for things like boxes, trinket dishes, paperweights, um, decorative containers to hold like office supplies, you know, like pen, paper clips, that sort of things. Um, and it's great for cold drink coasters or wine coasters, for example. Now, see, me personally, I make my resin work more for the art and beauty of it. So my priorities are the overall finish that I'm going to get and how the inks are going to behave in the resin. And I like the way the inks react to this resin. So those are the characteristics that make me choose this resin all the time. And I'm also happy with the better price this company is able to charge because they're the direct manufacturer of their resins. Some companies have the resins made for them, which is why some, some prices are so much higher than others. If you'd like to try this or any other resin that this company makes, there's a 20% off coupon code and link in the description box for you below the video. You'll also need a couple of molds that make you happy. I'm trying out one that's new for me today. It's got faceted edges, so I'm really excited to see how it performs. And then we're gonna be making a smaller Petri in this. Okay, let's do this. Here is the new mold. It's about 13 centimeters or a little over five inches across. It's shiny on the inside, so the piece that I remove will be shiny as well. I've got my resin mixed up and I've already let it sit for eh, roughly five to seven minutes so that the bubbles can rise and pop on their own. I made up just under 100 milliliters for our pieces. This is a two to one resin, so I added 66 mils of part A and 33 mils of part B giving me 99 milliliters total. I'm pouring in about 75 of those mils into this mold. Oh, give or take, I don't know, three or five, I think. I'm not being exact, but you know, roughly 75. You see me making sure that any leftover bubbles that might cling to the inside edge are being dislodged. If they can't pop on their own once they've been dislodged and rise. You can always pass a heat tool or a torch very quickly 
over the resin to help to get those bubbles to pop. For the resin that's left over, I'm adding several drops of Pinata Blanco Blanco or white. I honestly just add until I get the opacity I'm after. So, I mean, sometimes I'll say, oh, add 20 drops, but you know, honestly, <laughs> I, I I don't really count. I just wing it. And um, sometimes I want something that's more translucent, like skim milk maybe. But today I want it to be more opaque. So think more like 1% uh, or 2% milk. I really want it to be like really white. For this piece, I want pink as the main color, if possible. So I'm starting out by putting quite a bit of it down. I'm starting with the metallic pink on the periphery and I'm following that with neon pink. And in a bit, another round of the metallic. Now what I tend to like about Marabou colors is the wispy nature they tend to have. That lets me be able to add more colors without them sort of blending a lot and, uh, I don't know, sort of affecting each other. Once they go down, they sort of thin, they, they become like wispy and thin, which lets me add another color right next to it without it necessarily wanting to blend all the time. I kind of like that for some pieces. There are other pieces that other inks really give you rich saturation. It depends on the look that you're going for. For this piece, I have a specific look that I'm after, which is why I'm using Marabou. Now for a round of white resin poured around the edge. You can pour it and leave it for a rope look. So in other words, pour it in and not touch it. Um, but I want a fluffy organza-like look first. So for that, I'm using a stick to swirl in my white. I'll kind of do a little uh, white later on that I won't swirl quite as much so that you can see the difference. Now, when doing something like this, using a tool in your mold, make sure not to touch the inside of the mold. So you don't wanna scratch it. So as I'm doing my swirling, I'm making sure not to go all the way down so that I'm touching the, the inside of the mold. Because you wanna protect the inner surface of your molds, be good to them and they will be good to you. If you scratch your mold, that scratch is gonna show up in every little piece that you ever make in that mold going forward. So try to keep them as pristine as you can. Okay, now I'm adding some metallic blue and then some glitter ink. I just chose the blue, green, gold glitter ink, but the others would work too, like the pink, green, gold or the violet, blue, green. I just really um, almost grabbed this one randomly. I love how the glitter spreads the mica of the blue metallic out into a ring or border for the glitter. I think that's pretty cool. And then I add some neon orange and some more glitter, cause you know, glitter is good. <laughs> I'm adding a little white to the center that I'll swirl in. Now I'm a fan of spirals, so it's always fun for me to put some of those in and see if they survive on the other side. Sometimes I get things that look like roses that way, so I'm hoping that maybe I can pull some of that off later on. And then I kind of felt the need for some green metallic in this piece too. Because this piece was start starting to look very, I don't know, garden-like. So I kind of needed some green. And then now let's add another swirl of white. I so wish I could freeze it and have it stay just like this because I think this is really pretty but I know that it's gonna soften and blend in. But seriously, how crazy pretty are these colors in here? 
Oh, and I forgot to mention that the Marabou inks are 50% off if you use the links that I have for you in the description box. So if you haven't gotten some, this is a really good time to do that. It's hard not to want to go nuts. <laughs> okay, just a little more. I mean, I do see some bare spots. No, no really. <laughs> Honest. And, and, you know, like I said, glitter. Good. <laughs> and then to end it all, I'm adding some white that I will try not to play with too much. I, I don't know what's going to happen later, but I'm going to leave it alone for now. And then maybe we can see if it looks different from the stuff that I swirled a lot earlier. For the smaller mold, I'm using a simple round one. Its inner diameter is roughly 8.5 centimeters or about three and a third inches across. I have just enough white resin left for this piece, only about 10 mils. Now I'm gonna show you another fun technique for resin and alcohol inks. The goal here is going to be to only make this side, the side that we're seeing now, pretty. This is why I wanted a really opaque white resin mix. Like any resin, I make sure to spread it out and dislodge possible bubbles. It's really harder now because I really can't see any bubbles that might be on the other side. So I try to spread it and hope, hope for the best. And I also make sure to pop any that I do see. This white is now about half an hour old. You know, this resin, it's because it's been, you know, I, I made the other piece and, and this resin's just been sitting around. So it's about half an hour old now. So it's a little thicker, which is good. I also only left enough to make a piece that's going to be about... I don't know, three, maybe four milliliter, millimeters thick. So really thin, like an eighth of an inch. Um, and a thin layer is important for this technique. I'm going to go for a symmetrical look, though it won't stay that way because resin always moves. But I'm going to go for a symmetrical look just to see how it moves. First, I'm using some metallic and then some glitter. <laughs> some neon, etc. Now the reason this works is because the inks will do very little sinking because A, the resin is thicker and B, it's a thin layer of resin. So the inks don't have very far to go. And the metallic and glitter inks in the Marabou line tend to love to float. They do very little sinking without being encouraged to with like white being dropped on top of them, for example, which we're not doing for this at all. So I'm just putting drops and then leaving them. Now, when doing something like this, work on a design that you like while keeping in mind that some ink will sink, but not a lot. And there will be movement in what you lay down. So if you pick colors that make you happy, you'll end up having something pretty. But, you know, maybe, you know, plan out kind of like a pattern, maybe. All right, I'm going to stop here. Okay, but I, I, the urge is killing me. <laughs> so... I'm going to swirl a little of the extra white from the first piece, J just a bit. Not all of it, just a little. I want to see if we can get some of the roses that I was talking about, which I do by making individual spirals here in the white. Okay, then I will let these sleep. I promise. N no, really, I promise I will not touch this again. <laughs> Now, if you'd like more videos every month, consider being a patron of this channel. You'll have direct access to help from me if you need it, um, input on what videos get made on this channel, and depending on your pledge level, you'll get varying numbers of exclusive extra videos a month. 
So to check out what all that's about, visit patreon.com slash Miriam's Nature for all the info. Okay, let's say nighty night to these. Yay, it's 24 hours later. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so both of these have cured beautifully and we get to check them out. So this one, remember uh, we did this in ink that, the white ink that was mixed into the resin. So I don't expect there'll be a lot of dropping to the other side, but for things like this, when I make a Petri like this, that's not my goal because I just love the way the inks will sort of blend into the white and move and the metallics, the marabou metallics are especially awesome in this because you really get that glittery effect. And then if you look really well, I'm hoping that it really shows this off in this sort of blue, green, teal area here, you really see the metallic sort of pearly shimmer. I apologize for the glare of the light. And then also what I love here is like right there, that sort of purpley effect that we get from the inks sort of blending. Cause I didn't use purple ink in here, but the, the liquid part of the uh, pink metallic and the liquid part of the blue metallic kind of gave that effect, which is just so pretty. And so overall, I think this is just lovely. And having used clear cast was also a really good idea because this is very, very thin and I didn't need to worry about the strength of the resulting Petri. So if I want to use this as a coaster, even as thin as it is, I won't have a problem. Um, and this effect only is going to work if you work thin. If you put like your white ink uh, resin mix and you make a, thi a thick piece, you won't see this nice sort of blending into the white because it'll sink in so much that you really will lose much of the effect. Okay, let's see what this looks like on the other side. But again, I'm not expecting much to have gone on to the other side because, you know, we're using an opaque base, really. So you can see how thin this is. And yeah, there's really hardly anything to see on this side. But again, my goal for this was this side, which I think is super duper pretty. Oh, I just love the shimmer of it. It reminds me of sort of like the fancy fabric that you'll see in Indian saris. Uh, it's just gorgeous, love it. Okay, so now, <laughs> the big one. Now this one too has a lot of shimmer on the top from the metallics here too. And, or the glitter in this case. The metallic is mostly visible and the blue, that's where you really can see it. So this is my first time using this mold. So I'm super excited to see the sides because they're, they're faceted. Okay, I think, oh, that's really pretty. Oh wow, that's a really pretty edge. That is a really pretty edge. It's a very pretty effect. So this one is much thicker than the other one. Alrighty, let's see what we got. Ooh, how awesome. <gasps> okay, I think this is possibly one of the prettiest Petries I've made. Oh, wow. Oh, there's so much going on. We got a lot of really sort of smoky, wispy sort of stuff going on here from, I think that's from the first pour of white and that I spiraled in, spiraled in. And then the glitter does not fall through to the other side, just a little hint of it right here. 
but it really, really does want to stay on this side. I had hoped it would be some, somewhat like um, Pinata Pearl, for example. When I drop that through a Petri, it'll come through to the other side, but the glitter really sits on the other side. But what's really neat is that we can still see it. So like here, you can see into it, like in between. You can kind of see through to this side, which is super pretty. And then the swirling that I did really gave us an awesome, awesome look. Oh, this is a wonderful mold. It has a really beautiful shine and the faceted edge is gorgeous. <sighs> All right, I am a super happy camper and I am very interested to hear what you guys think of these. Which effect do you like best? Tell me in the comments. I am so eager to hear all about it. In this case, I love that I got the pink that I wanted and some of what I call spiral roses. You can see some of the white that I left more or less untouched too. The parts that look like puffy rope or string running through here and there. I think it adds some extra fun texture throughout the piece. What do you think of the results? That's what's really important to me right now. <laughs> also, what do you think of the white as a background color and adding inks on top of that? What did you think of that effect? In the comments, let me know also what you thought of the faceted mold. Would you like to see me use other molds in future videos? Ooh, and also, <laughs> tell me your favorite colors. What colors of ink do you love to use? And what are you making these days? Wow, that's a heck of a lot of homework, isn't it? <laughs> well, start your comments right now because you're gonna be at it for a while. <laughs> Now remember to come show off whatever you make in my wonderfully supportive Facebook group. It's thousands of people from all over the world sharing and learning and having fun together. Links for everything I used are in the description box below. May the inks and the resin and watercolor and whatever else you're using these days just be kind to you in your studios and go let your creative nature shine and stay safe. See you soon. Bye now.